In 2018, a shock retirement of one of the modern day great small forwards. At just 28 years of age, Silrioli called time on his career. He was at the peak of his game, Hawthorne were looking back on the up, and a suspected fallout with Hawthorne president Jeff Kennett turned out to be correct. Rioli and his wife Sharon revealed how the trouble with Kengett stemmed from an incident at the Launceston Airport in 2018. Kengett allegedly made a comment about his wife's ripped designer jeans. Rioli described the incident as the final straw after a series of other events regarding Hawthorne's relationship with its indigenous players. As we know, in September 2002, the club commissioned an external review of its historical treatment of indigenous players, covering the period of Alistair Clarkson's tenure at the club, including the four premiership years. Allegations within the report included accusations of racism, including the forced removal of First Nations players from families and the demanding of a pregnancy termination over the course of several years. Allegedly, the three people that were most responsible for these claims were Alistair Clarkson, former Hawthorne assistant coach Chris Fagan, and head of player development Jason Burt. The report as of today remains confidential. In 2013, when Eddie Maguire and Adam Good were in a storm of media drama, Eddie Maguire made his claim look even worse by making a racist remark live on radio about Sydney player Adam Goods. After Adam Goods had been called out by a Collingwood fan in the crowd with a racist remark and she was asked to leave the stadium and escorted by security, Maguire made the comment live on radio about Adam Goods saying that he should be used to promote the musical King Kong in a highly racist remark. What a great promo that is for, for King Kong. Get Adam Goods down for do you reckon? No, I no? thought so. Or you, absolutely <laughs> no. <laughs> you, you can see them doing it, can't you? Who? Goodsy. What's that? Uh, you know, the big, but the, oh, eighth no, thing, the no, whole no, thing. No, I'm no, just no. saying the pumping them up and mucking around, yeah. all that sort of stuff. Hey, just to clear up, when we were talking about uh, King Kong there, and I was mumbling my way through about Goodsy, I was trying to say, imagine the old days of trying to get people in for publicity, and I mumbled yeah. my way through that. So anyone who yeah. th thought that I was having a, a go of being a smart aleck, I'd take that back. Yeah. yeah no, so there wasn't the, nothing involved in it. sure where you were going with that one, but yeah, that's... No, uh, I knew that I was halfway there. I was that exhausted this morning, <laughs> so apologies to that. But uh, I, was thinking, I, was, do, I was but... thinking, no, but I was thinking, you know, in the old days, in these situations, you, the publicity and all that type yeah. of thing and all that sort of thing. Anyway, so I was off off on a tangent somewhere. Don't think you need to declare your bona fides oh, on that no, one. Either. That's yeah, right. that's but, just, but just in case people are thinking, what the hell's he on about? I've got no idea either. <laughs> This came just days after he made a public show of support for Goods when he was racially abused by a Magpies fan. Being Collingwood president at the time, he was immediately met with resignation calls. He issued an on-air apology and stayed Collingwood president for a following eight years. We thought the days of violent dog acts were long gone on the football field. In 2018, a horrific display was shown in the Western Derby between Fremantle and the West Coast Eagles. Andrew Gaff stunned the AFL world in 2018 when he viciously struck out against Fremantle rookie Andrew Brayshaw. Andrew Gaff at the time was known for being very neutral and a very calm personality and player. This changed the entire perception of how we saw him as a person. He whacked rookie Andrew Brayshaw miles off the ball in the jaw, leaving the docker with a broken jaw and three dislodged teeth. Talk about his teeth too. Let's have a look. So we match in the first one. Oh, oh wow. Well. Oh, jeez. Oh, well, the fact that he hasn't taken his mouth guard out would suggest that his, his teeth are potentially loose or he's having a, a real issue with his jaw because otherwise you'd think the mouth yes. guard would have come out. Gaff was handed an eight-match ban for his strike, the equal longest suspension in league history, and missed out on his side's premiership that year. Apparently, Gaff's hit on Brayshaw occurred so far off the ball that Brayshaw's teammates didn't realise what had happened until he was being assisted off the ground with blood streaming from his mouth. Nicky Wimar Craig is one of the most iconic and powerful images in Australian football history in 1993. When St Kilda and Collingwood faced off of Victoria Park in round four of the 1993 AFL 
season. St Kilda player Nicky Wimar copped an absolute hurling of racial abuse from the Magpies fans in attendance. Wimar had been told to go and sniff some petrol, among other vile comments as he played a role in his team's win over the Pies that day. After the final siren, Wimar walked towards the Magpie cheer squad and lifted up his jumper and pointed to his skin. The moment was snapped up and published in the Sunday Age with the headline, Winmar, I'm black and proud of it. There is now a statue outside Perth's Optus Stadium representing the powerful moment that this was. In 2009, Melbourne saw themselves in an absolute rot as a football club and as a team. They finished on the bottom of the ladder in 2009 after just recording four wins and were awarded a priority pick at the top of the 2009 AFL Draft. They were in a three-way tie at the bottom of the ladder in round 15, but ultimately won the wooden spoon six points clear of the second last Tigers after losing seven of its last eight matches. The AFL launched an investigation into the club's 2009 season after an interview from former demon Brock McLean, who revealed he'd requested a trade due to being dissatisfied by the team's match strategies. The AFL investigated three particular matches from 2009, which saw then-coach Dean Bailey make some head-scratching calls, such as playing numerous players out of their natural positions. After a 203-day investigation, the AFL ruled that Melbourne was not guilty of tanking, but found Bailey and Demons football boss Chris Connolly guilty of acting in a manner prejudicial to the interests of the competition. Bailey and Connolly were both handed lengthy suspensions, while Melbourne were fined $500,000. 2018, the Adelaide Crows camp. After being smashed in the 2017 Grand Final by Richmond, despite being the heavy favourites, Adelaide wanted to push their players to the next level. Unfortunately, it went way too far. The Crows embarked on a pre-season camp in the Gold Coast ahead of the 2018 AFL season. The camp was intended to help the Crows develop mental resilience, but had the opposite of the desired effect as the team soon unraveled. Adelaide slumped from 1st to 12th in 2018, with the club cutting ties with then-coach Don Pike, who admitted the camp was a failure. By July 2020, eight of Adelaide's best 22 players from the 2017 Grand Final side had departed the club. A Safe Work SA investigation into the camp in 2021 cleared Adelaide of breaching health and safety laws, while an AFL investigation in 2018 also determined the Crows had not violated any of its rules. The camp controversy reared its ugly head four years later when Eddie Betts detailed what the players were allegedly subjected to in his book. Both Adelaide and the AFL apologised to Betts and the other players involved in the camp following the release of his biography. Ben Cousins Fall From Grace, one of the saddest stories in AFL history. He made his debut in 1996 and he became an overnight sensation, quickly becoming one of the game's very best players. He was named West Coast captain at just 23 years of age and had won a premiership, a Brownlow medal and claimed six All-Australian jackets and four Eagles Best and Fairest awards by the time he was 28. However, it all came crashing down in the prime of his career due to what became a crippling drug addiction. After being suspended indefinitely in early 2007, Cousins was forced to undergo four weeks of rehab in Malibu when it was confirmed that he had a substance abuse problem. Cousins eventually returned towards the back end of the 2007 season, but his time at the Eagles came to an end just a month after the season ended. Cousins' car was stopped and searched by police in October and he was arrested for drug possession and refusing to submit a blood test. He was sacked the next day by the Eagles and was banned from playing AFL for 12 months due to bringing the game into disrepute. Cousins returned to play two final seasons with Richmond in 2009 and 2010 before retiring at 32. His off-field issues with substance abuse continued to derail his life for much of the next decade. Cousins has turned his life around as of late and even attended the 2021 Brownlow Medal and has since taken up some AFL media work as well. 2012, the forbidden Essendon Supplement Scandal. The Essendon Supplement Scandal is widely recognised as one of the darkest incidents in all of Australian sport. Under the leadership of senior coach James Hurd and assistant Mark Thompson, who'd returned to the club after a highly successful stint at Geelong, the Bombers were attempting to rise back up the ladder. Thompson introduced Essendon to a performance coach, Dean Robinson, who he'd worked with at, at Geelong, who then introduced them to sports scientist, Stephen Dank. 
Dank was given primary responsibility to establish and run the supplements program. The program primarily consisted of injects of supplements to improve soft tissue recovery times and to help players benefit from a heavier training load. The players were assured that all of the supplements were Asaga approved. In February 2013, Essendon self-reported itself to the AFL and Asaga over concerns surrounding its 2012 supplements program and what followed for the club was hell. In August 2013, after an AFL and Asaga investigation into the program, Essendon was fined $2 million kicked out of the 2013 final series and was prohibited from exercising draft picks in both the 2013 and 2014 draft. Herg was suspended from involvement with the club for 12 months. After a series of investigations and appeals, the Court of Arbitration for Sport handed down a guilty verdict to the 34 Essendon players who'd partaken in the supplements program. As a result, the players were handed two-year bans in January 2016, backdated to March 2015 meaning the players would miss the entire 2016 AFL season. The bans also extended to players who had retired and gone into coaching. With most of its main players banned, Essendon was forced to fill its list for 2016 with a number of top-up players and finish with a record of 3-19, and the second worst season in the club's history. Essendon captain at the time, Joe Watson, was also stripped of his 2012 Brownlow medal. It was awarded jointly to Sam Mitchell and Trent Cotchin. If you did enjoy this video and do enjoy my content, please make sure to hit the subscribe button for more content like this during the 2023 AFL season. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Cheers.